Founded in 1971 by Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum is steeped in authoritarianism and Marxist ideology. It's an ideology which is creeping into governments across the world. To quote Schwab himself when speaking about the Canadian Parliament, we penetrate the cabinets. I know that half, that half this cabinet, even more than half, are actually young global leaders of the, of the World Economic Forum. It's true in Argentina, it's true in France, now with the president who is a young global leader, end quote. The World Economic Forum promotes globalist issues such as climate change, so-called systemic racism and sexism, and creating an online digital identity. However, closer inspection reveals the World Economic Forum is an anti-capitalist, anti-free market organisation that seeks to subvert Western values and political processes. And they are very organised and very well funded. Their message is designed to appear harmless when, in fact, the ideology that underpins it is revolutionary and destructive. They train aspirational leaders in their ideology and help them make connections in spheres including politics, business and the arts. The World Economic Forum has consistently advocated for the harshest and most extreme COVID uh, measures possible, including lockdowns, mandatory vaccinations, vaccine passports and mask mandates, despite these policies assaulting many of our basic liberties. At the centre of the World Economic Forum's ideology is stakeholder capitalism. Essentially, this is a theory that traditional free market capitalism ignores the dangers posed by climate change, and so the government must enforce restrictive policies to save the environment, even if that means less wealth. Why then are the forum's criticisms, criticisms of capitalism always directed at Western nations rather than the great polluters such as China and India? The forum believes that your freedoms should be minimised to prevent the imminent climate catastrophe the one that's becoming, coming for 10 years in the last 50 years, by the way. The central theme of the World Economic Forum's material is what they call the Great Reset, which is Klaus Schwab's term for the opportunity the pandemic has presented to reimagine and reinvent the economic policies of the West. The term comes from Schwab directly himself with his 2020 book entitled The Great Reset. In a now-deleted video titled Eight Predictions for the World in 2030, the World Economic Forum claimed that you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, a slogan that hits the same dystopian note as work makes you free and ignorance is strength. You don't have to be a political philosopher to figure out that if you own nothing, the state owns everything. There's a word for this, it's called communism. The World Economic Forum and its affili affiliates shamelessly promote the abolition of private property, a central facet of Karl Marx's demented utopian ideology which led to the deaths of tens of millions of people worldwide in the 20th century. To quote Margaret Thatcher, quote, communism never sleeps, never changes its objectives, and nor should we. No matter how sophisticated the World Economic Forum tries to make the abolition of private property around the world sound, uh, the fantasies of Karl Marx always lead to the crushing of individuals' liberties and lives and the expansion of the state's tyranny and power. It is imperative that we pay close attention to the World Economic Forum and do all that we can to preserve liberty and reduce government intrusion in our lives. And if we fail to do so, the anti-democratic forces in the West will continue to march on. And we may wake up to an Australia that we no longer recognise. Australians deserve to know the extent to which the World Economic Forum's influence and infiltration of our country and how far it has gone, and we're going to find out.